Okay, so this is going to be a quick video to answer a couple of questions I've been asked about the exam in ELEC 120. So this is looking at the January 2012 paper, question 3, which is about Ampere's law. And you're told uh, Ampere's law in electromagnetism can be written down as the loop integral of H dL is equal to I. So describe carefully in words the meaning of this equation. Um, show how this equation can be written in terms of magnetic flux density B. So um, when I've presented you with Ampere's law, the form I've written it in is mu naught uh, I is equal to the loop integral of B D L. So these are exactly the same thing, and the reason why is the relationship between H and B. So I'm going to quickly explain what the relationship between these two is, and hopefully that will clear up some misunderstandings. So what we can say is that um, in the lecture notes, I've said B is equal to mu naught H plus M. Um, and I'm going to define each of these terms because um, I did this in the lecture, but I think it might be a bit clearer for me to go over it again now. So B is the total uh, magnetic flux density. And this is our friend that's in Tesla or Weber's per meter squared. Um, that's not really important. I'm just going over that because remember, if you don't include units in your answer, you will lose half a mark. Mu naught is the permeability of free space. That's a constant which is given on the front of your exam paper. Um, and then that leaves us with H and M. So H is the, basically, it's the induced uh, magnetic field. And this is due to um, a current uh, flowing in a wire. So that's the situation that we're looking at here. We also have this term M. And M is the residual magnetism. And this is uh, important when we're looking at a material which is magnetic. Um, so you've got permanent magnets or uh, this type of effect. And you, when you're characterizing the total magnetic flux density, you need to take into account the induced magnetic field, H, and also M, which is this residual magnetic um, effect. Magnetic field, magnetic, uh, magnetic field is the better word for that. So in the situation where we're looking at a current carrying wire in free space, we're not looking at the situation where we've got any magnetic materials present. We've got no residual magnetism, so we can ignore M. That leads us down to this relationship simply that B is equal to mu naught H. Um, and that's how we end up with these two different forms of Ampere's law at the top, which are actually the same thing. So that hopefully will clear up a few um, points. Now I'm going to very quickly go through how we get from um, Ampere's law to the expression for the magnetic flux density at a distance away from a current carrying wire. So we've got the situation, here's our wire, we've got a current flowing through it, I, and say so we want to find the magnetic field strength at some distance, R. So R is radius here, well, that's kind of giving away what we're going to do, but it's at some distance and we're looking at the magnetic field strength there. We have uh, the form of Ampere's law up here, so I'm going to use the form with B because I like it a bit more because it looks more similar to Gauss's law for electric, um, electric fields, which is why I've used it in, that, in this form in the lecture notes. So we've got our expression of Ampere's law here. This is actually given to you, so you don't need to memorize this. And now we're going to get down and find what the magnetic field strength is at this point from our current carrying wire. So what do we do? Well, we've got mu naught and we've got I already. It's this other side of the equation we need to change. We're trying to find B. What we can do, since we know a current carrying wire, the magnetic field is going to be outwards radially, we're going to use a circle because we like circles and it's going to make the maths a lot easier. So we're going to define our loop integral as a circle. And all this means, this integral here, is we can replace this now with the distance that we've traveled because it's a loop integral. So that's the circumference of a circle. And that's the main difference between Ampere's law and Gauss's law is that Ampere's law, we're looking at loops and line distances. And for Gauss's law, we're looking at surfaces. So B is still there, but we're going to replace our line integral with the circumference of a circle, which is 2.5. 
2 pi r. That's our expression here, and that's, that's all we've done. We've applied Ampere's law, and it sounds horrible, but it's actually pretty simple. And then we can just rearrange it for b. So we get b is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. Um, and if you want to put it in terms of h, you just replace um, b with h. And uh, that's it. So if you can answer a question to find out what is the magnetic field strength outside a current carrying wire, you're doing well, and that's what you need to be able to do for the examination.